Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Mod Source server. Today, 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 it's another episode. I've recorded so many videos back to back lately, it is just absolutely crazy. And today, I'm really hoping to uh, record this video quite quickly actually, because I just want some time off, you know, I want to chill out and hang out and see some friends, etc. And I've been working like a slave it feels sometimes on these videos. You know, obviously I love making them, uh, but they just take so much time. And in the last episode, I was really thankful that DMAC came over and hung out with us because we had a great time. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to upload that as the video. Do something different because I'd spent ages and ages working on this area, recording some clips which, when I watched back, they were not so entertaining. I got pretty frustrated with some of the things. For example, I was trying to place this carpenter's wedge block in this place over here, and no matter what I did, it just wouldn't rotate or move into this position right here. I got ever so frustrated with it and I thought that's just silly. So anyway, I've been working on this area. We need to grab something over here, I do believe, because I just noticed that there's something there that I've missed. Um, but there are just a couple of things I forgot to mention. For example, we had put in these elevator blocks over here so we can pop up to these intersections, which is actually a really nice place to have them. We should probably put one over here so we can pop up to that one. And in the future, as we expand things, yes, I'm walking past some of the stuff that I've done. Um, in the future, we'll have this go down here and we'll be able to pop up into this place as well. So we're going to have a real labyrinth of a base where we can just run around and hop into different areas and stuff like that, which is going to be awesome. So anyway, let's talk a little bit more about what I've been doing in between the episodes. Most of it has been organising my chests, as you can see. Everything's been upgraded to diamond, and I am really, really happy. Really happy with how this has turned out. I feel like this is it. This is a great storage system. We've got so much space now. Everything's been neatly organised. You know, I've been a lot smarter with organising things. We've got stuff that's organised by mods. I think I talked about this a little bit in the last episode. But now I'm just going to come through everything and figured out all the little details. And so there's just a couple of little projects and jobs that we're going to be doing this episode to finalise the storage area. So anyway, we need to fly around the back. There's a couple of things for me to show you. And quickly we want to add some of these covers over here. There we go and one there and one there and now that's nicely covered up and also providing some light which is cool so down the bottom here we've added some filter pipes this one right here is going to filter out bone meal and just send it into our bone meal chest and this goes to the tree farm which has been running continuously in passive mode which is where we don't use bone meal and now that I think about it if it's on, it's going to use the bone mill no matter what, so I might want to add a bone mill switch at some point. But there's an idea for another day. If ever bone mill goes into the system for some reason, uh, then it's going to you know, get the tree farm running. So plenty and plenty of fuel. Absolutely love this system. It's ever so cool. <laughs> anyway, right, let's go back round to this bit because there is another item filter that I've added. This one right here, the other side of that is our furnace chest, so I thought it would be a good idea to add a filter here as well. So if any of these items come through, uh, raw pork chop or beef, it's going to cook them and send them back into the system automatically, which is really cool. So um, if ever we want to change what's on this item filter, what we would do is put another block there temporarily, probably something that we wouldn't expect to come through the system, so that way um, as we're changing the properties of this, you know, stuff doesn't go in there because I had the whole system break because some gunpowder went in and it got caught in the ender chest up here, which is where it goes to because uh, this thing grabs it and then it's got nowhere to put it so it just stays in the transfer node. And yeah, so, oh, what do we want to do? There's a few things actually. Let's go back on the inside and talk about this ender IO setup that I built over the side here. In fact, we'll have a quick look at the back. Before I was using um, different conduits. These ones are upgraded a little. They carry more RF and I haven't really seen too much of a boost in performance because I haven't been using any of this stuff. But right here, we've got a sort of automated crafting station. If ever we want to do lots of mass crafting, we can do three different recipes. We can put our ingredients in these three stages and the output will end up on this side. So each of these, you just about see a little bit of blue and a little bit of orange or red and they're all configured to go from left to right. So that's going to be very useful and handy, a nice little permanent setup. Then over here we've got a couple of sag mills, we've got some alloy smelters, so this stuff is all readily available with upgrades and energy, etc. And then we've got our slice and spice, and we've got our soul binder, which needs XP. So down here I put a little tank and a little XP drain as well. The thing is though, the XP drain doesn't really hold the stuff, it just goes straight into this thing. So now it's got 40 levels, and you don't really stand too close to this thing when you're using it, but you might stand on it by accident. So I'm not too bothered about that. We have a ridiculous amount of XP, as you know, <laughs> which is kind of cheaty, but there you go. 
So one of the projects that we're going to do, I'm hoping, because I don't have a solution for this, is uh, automatically convert our Ender-IO glass into regular glass because it's going into this chest right here. Now one way I could solve that is to move this chest to a different location and, uh, and then it would find this bit first on our system, which actually sounds a lot easier than the thing I was going to do. See, I was going to make a... Um, some sort of machine back there to pick out the glass before it gets to this one and then convert it into regular glass but actually I think that's a much smarter solution one that we can do straight away so let's just check uh, those ones over there have mod sorting pipes so we can just grab a dolly and swap this around quickly awesome so there are a couple of other little things here but I just can't seem to remember them at the moment and it looks like that one over there needs um, some glowstone covers as well. There we go, so extra utilities is now on this side. Ender IO is over there. If we yank out all of this glass and dump it into our main system, then it should go straight into this bit over here. And there we go, the number's going up. That is fantastic. Brilliant. So that is our storage system pretty much done right there. So I've got a little something to show you and a small little project we're going to do quickly. Over here in this chest I have a whole bunch of ores and what I'd like to do is actually filter these out using a filter pipe on the back of this, send them to a little machine that's going to fortune these and then send them back into the system. So obviously we're not going to put stuff like iron down because we can't fortune that but ores like redstone will go into that and that means whenever they come through the system they'll automatically be processed and we won't have them lying around in a chest like this. Now the other thing that I'd like to do is upgrade our quarry to silk touch and that means building a new one from scratch. So when we do this it's going to be a lot easier, I've got the materials to craft more lasers, we have a better power source as well so that shouldn't be too much of a hassle. I'm going to do that all off camera though because you've seen me go through that whole process before. Uh, but by upgrading to a silk touch quarry we're going to stop uh, the quarry making loads of XP from where it fortunes the ores and uh, that just reduces the strain on the server so then we'll have more of a reason to make use of this system as well you know all the redstone ore that comes through and the diamond ore will automatically be fortuned which will be really cool kinda what's happening already because the quarry does it except uh, it will be less strain on the server so over here there is something that I wanted to show you the mod author of this mod right here extra utilities posted an image saying that you can actually put more than a stack of these world interaction upgrades in so previously we thought that a stack of these meant you got 64 at a time because that's all that appears in this block right here but actually you can put a whole row of these things and it'll actually generate those I think it's every tick so that's something that I just wanted to let you know about I don't have the resources to do that just yet but it does mean that we can seriously upgrade this thing over time I mean Let's have a look. We've almost got one stack and we've got room for another four. So we can multiply the speed of that by like 400%. Is that the correct maths? <laughs> Which will be awesome. And uh, that means we get more bedrockium quicker. And look at that. We've got seven of those. So that's pretty cool. I really need to put an ender chest on there so we can automatically send it to a chest. So anyway, right. I'm going to make that quarry, make that little fortune pick system and be back with you in a moment. Well, I guess that over an hour has gone by. Setting up this machine has been a little bit time consuming, but we're here. This is completely untested and I wanted to walk you through this little setup and everything fits into a nice little square here as well. But it is a little bit dark. You can kind of see with night vision that it's not too bright around here. So I thought I'd put down some glowstone and that looks kind of silly sitting there in the middle, but now it's nice and bright. So a lot went into this. First of all, let's start off with the pick that's going to harvest these things. It has uh, redstone and lapis and flux. Now this is the second tier of flux. I was uh, kind of tempted to craft a whole stack of the top tier but then I realized that would take a ridiculous amount of time. So I crafted uh, half a stack of the first one and then made one of the second tier flux capacitor and put that on there and we're never going to use up that much RF in each turn because it gets charged every time we use it. So this is the same setup from down at the tree farm. We have our autonomous activator. It's going to activate when there's a block in front of it because this redstone torch will then uh, power that and I hope it doesn't lock the vacuum hopper that might be a little bit of a problem you know I've spent some time positioning things around here and I think I've just overlooked that so anyway this is a block place so when that place is down a block um, then it's going to power the autonomous activator and it's got a redstone clock so this thing activates quite frequently so like before um, this has a filter in it and it's inverted so whenever that item fully charged is not in there it's going to take it out put it into the energetic infuser which is running off some wireless power down below and then when it's fully charged it's going to go back into the autonomous activator so from this point we have our chest here this is our input it's orange orange gray I think and then that goes into this thing right here we've got no upgrades on this transfer node I don't think we need any 
and this thing has an inventory so it's going to continuously place down the items that are in there and then this thing is going to harvest them then this thing should pick up the XP we've blocked all of the items the XP should go into this thing right here which has a ender transmitter on that's for XL XP if we wander over here and I'm still getting used to where these elevators are <laughs> I still like fly outside the base and try and get down to the tree farm that way which is really silly um, and then we have the ender receiver on this end so it should receive in here the XP from the one up the top but I've not tested or tried that before so um, it's fingers crossed really so let's go back up and I think I've explained everything yep that's all that that does over here by the way we have an advanced item collector that's going to pick everything up instantly DMAC told me that that would be a lot quicker than the vacuum hopper so we've got that thing running there so not too much going on at once and then this ender chest is our master one so all of the items that get harvested go back into there now I've also set up an ender pouch for this so why don't we do our test with this let's say we're out in the world we find some ores we know oh look at that it opens in the corner that's cool so we know that these things need uh, need sorting out so we put them in here and you know what I've completely forgotten to put that in there that's really bad <laughs> okay right so now it should start harvesting the thing down goes the redstone the redstone gets picked up I don't see any XP although with the tree farm we've seen it where we harvest it and sometimes we get XP with the thing and sometimes we don't so that's probably a bug if we don't get XP it's not the worst thing in the world so I'm not bothered and it would appear that this is working you know like a charm Except I never charged it and it's using up all the RF power. Oh dear. Sorry, not the RF power, the durability. Okay, let's go fix that quickly. Let's take the redstone out of here and uh, and sort that out. I was just thinking to myself, I hope that repairing this doesn't screw up the item filter. And it would actually because we've also charged it as well. So I'm really glad uh, that I thought of that. And I think it just pulled out the sticks. So let's remove that one, put in the correct one. And then we can put this back in here. We have to put our sticks back in this thing over here. And then it should be ready to go again. So in goes the pick. No, it's ignoring the item filter possibly. It is. Why is it ignoring the item filter? I do not understand. It kind of makes sense actually. This thing is inverted so we need the stick on there as well. Meaning it won't pull out the sticks. However, they were in there just fine before. I don't really understand that and technically we don't actually need the sticks because I think this thing is always going to come back into the first slot but anyway that is all set up now so what we want to do is chuck in a little bit more uh, <laughs> wrong bag let's grab the right bag I want to put in a little bit more ore and just test that this thing works and there it goes that would indeed appear to work this would be the maximum <laughs> Did the redstone just fly out over there? This would be the maximum maximum capacity for the ores, by the way. So this thing, if it's too slow for the quarry, it might fill up a little bit, which is something um, to think about. Maybe we add a little bit of a storage system over here. But there you go, it's working. I think what I'm going to do is increase the radius of this, just in case they pop out and fly everywhere again. And that's probably a timing thing. If this thing breaks right as the uh, block placer here gets activated, then it's going to do that. So all of that's been sent back into the system. Let's just... Uh, Chuck some more redstone ore in there, check that that's working correctly. Uh, we'll go over here and look at the redstone, so that should be coming around now. And I think I saw the uh, number go up. There it is, it's going up. Okay, that's brilliant. So the next thing for us to do is to just attach this to the system. We'll take the input ender chest. I have another one of those somewhere. I think it was inside the base where we were a moment ago. And we'll put it around the back here with a filter. So the best place for that would actually probably be this one right here. What we'll do is we'll have the ender chest above it, we'll put some covers around so the pipes don't connect, and then the top filter on here, which will be the white one, I think, that will then be the ore, dic ore dictionary for all the ores that we want to send to our fortune machine, which is really cool. So that's a nice little project. This, I'm really glad that this worked, you know, first go, actually. I haven't seen any problems with it, um, except no XP, but that's not really a problem. So anyway, let's get that set up and see it in action. Okay, it's been set up. I was a little bit disappointed by these item filters because they can only do nine items at the most. So all of those can be broken down by a fortune pick and so can those three as well. So we've got room for another six, otherwise we'll have to redesign that a little bit over there. But I did test all of the ores that we had. You know, not all of these I know about too much and uh, some of them can't be broken down with fortune which are these ones right here so we're actually going to go to the nether next I think to set up our quarry obviously when we quarry in the future things like diamonds and stuff will come through but I wanted to set up a uh, little project over there in the nether so we're going to get some more of these nether ores and maybe we can learn a little bit more about how they work as well as quartz as well which will now automatically come for our system which is awesome we can just uh, dump these ores in like that as if we were running a quarry 
We might need a few upgrades on some of this stuff though to keep up with the quarry. And there you go, it's working, it's doing its thing, which is wonderful. And that shouldn't pick up any items because there's sticks in there. Awesome, so that's that little project done. As I said, what we're going to do next is go over and set up um, a quarry in the nether. We've got a silk touch quarry at last and uh, there's not much more to say about it. So let's go over there and get that thing running. Okay, the quarry is running. <laughs> this looks awesome. We've gone for a very small one over here. I might make this a little bigger, but I just kind of wanted to do a small one for now. Didn't want to tread on anyone's toes, but I have had a look around this area. So our portal is just back over here. We're around the corner from it, and down here I've done some exploring. Doesn't look like anyone's building in this area at all. So we're just going to take up a small chunk of this area, and uh, it's going to go all the way down to the bottom where a lot of the lava has been replaced by stone which is one of the features of a particular type of pump or quarry and that reminds me actually R1 has run out so I might have to rebuild this or, uh, or move it or something like that but we'll do that at another time because there's a lot more that I want to do this episode so it might be a little tricky for me to find my way out of here before I had the, uh, the quarry's little blue lines you know from where you set it up to show me the way back out hmm Okay, there we go. I found it. So let's go and look at the quarry again. It's just up here. And this is the setup that we had before, except we're now using the new chest. Although, because this is the nether, we're not going to pick up any of the ores that will go through the ore processing bit. And then on the back here, we've still got the old transfer node. So one thing I could do is upgrade this to uh, a hyper transfer node. And is it me, or is it stopped working? That might be because of the bedrock, actually. It wouldn't surprise me if that was getting in the way. Yeah, I can't see any other reason. Right, I'll reset this up a little bit lower. I have a funny little story for you. Turns out that the server crashed. There was uh, nothing wrong with the quarry, or maybe the quarry was the reason that it crashed. But the server has been offline for the entire day. It is now very late in the evening, and Hypno is able to run a backup. Now, he restored the never. That was where the problem was, where we were quarrying. And uh, that means that the overworld is okay. So everything that we've done so far over here is fine. And I've just spent a little bit of time getting back all the things that I lost from, uh, you know, having the nether rolled back like all our quarry stuff. So all of that's good. And we're back to where we were. But I have totally run out of time uh, to do this episode. So I'm not going to upload it straight away. What I'm actually going to do is see if I can find a little bit of time here and there to do one or two more things that I wanted to do. For example, the thermal expansion machines over here. And I had a little project for our wither farm down there which I'd really like to do. And it would appear that I can't create a fly again, which is a little bit of a bug. And by the way, the uh, server is performing terribly. When we throw this thing down on the ground, it's probably going to take a long time to uh, get picked back up. So you saw there's a little bit of a delay where it got thrown down, and now it'll probably take a while for this to get picked back up. But one thing I've noticed is when the fly mode stops working, if you take this out of your inventory and put it back in again, that seems to fix it. And you can see the server is performing really badly. So let's put that back into this bit. And then we should be able to fly. There it is. Awesome. Okay, so anyway, uh, if I have time to record and to do more, I'll do another clip. Otherwise, the next thing you'll see is me saying goodbye. Uh, hopefully that is not the case, though. It is late, but I had time for one more project. And let's turn on night vision. Why not? Wow, it looks so different like this. I don't actually like how it looks in night vision, but sometimes it's... Uh, quite useful you know the base when fully lit up isn't as glamorous as when you have some shading and yes some <laughs> moody lighting anyway right so I've got something in my inventory here it is a cleaver this thing is absolutely awesome do you want to know why because it beheads every single time now this is something that DMAX suggested to me he said hey you know those cleavers if you've got 100% beheading on them you're going to get a wither skull every time so, because of that, I've created one of these. This is actually made entirely out of paper. It turns out if you use stacks of paper, you can make the cleaver blade and the plating out of paper as well. So that gave us, I think, seven modifiers plus two um, allowed us to get the chance to behead all the way up to 100. You can increase that by adding ender pearls and obsidian. And then we added a flux capacitor to it so it can be repaired with RF power. And yes, that means that we can kill the weather skeletons with this thing and get a skull every single time which is absolutely crazy i still can't quite wrap my head around that that's going to mean a ridiculous amount of wither killing so we set up yet another one of these little things uh, like we've got on our tree farm and now on our ore miner over here and i haven't tested it out yet in fact i think we have a little bit of a problem with our mob essence which i've got to go and check out because none of it is coming through here so we've probably run out but these things are not really doing a lot at all i'm not sure if just a tiny bit of mob essence is coming through and these are working slow or if it's stopped completely but what's going to happen is the wither skeletons will spawn they'll drop and then when we turn on these fans i can simulate um, exactly what is going to happen because it's going to blow them all the way over to that corner 
And when I do this myself, the thing is running, so I might get hurt here. However, I don't think it does a lot of damage. But anyway, the Wither Skeleton falls down, and they make their way straight over to this corner. Not too fast, and there you go, it hits me. <laughs> um, and that's how it's going to work, and that's going to get us a lot of Wither Skulls. I'm really looking forward to it, but I've got to run it overnight because it is late. So I think what we should do is go over to the Creeper Farm and just check on that thing, see if things are okay. Last time I was over there, the mob essence was going down, so this thing certainly uses a lot more than that produces. So let's go over there and see if that's what's happening. For a second there, I thought that this glass wasn't doing its thing. I was wondering, why is it all kind of like bright in there? Night vision! Aha! Yes, that would be the reason why. And a moment ago, these creepers were dancing up and down in the air. I know that sounds a little crazy, but the tick lag is so bad that it was teleporting them back up into the air. So if any more spawn while we're recording, that will certainly be amusing. Uh, but this thing does appear to be working. I did check on the oil. Oil? <laughs> the bedrockium drum down here, you can see. That's actually gone up a little bit since I last checked, which is cool. And now it's going down again, so it is taking it away. So it's working, but slowly. And I guess I'll find out for sure tomorrow morning when I wake up. I'll go and check on the Wither Skulls and see if we got any. But that... Oh, look, there we go. Dancing Creepers. Quickly. Oh, we missed it again. Oh, well. <laughs> that is going to be it. Oh, no, there they are. There you go. You can see the Dancing Creepers. That's going to be it for this episode. Well, <laughs> right in your face. Uh, unfortunately, wanted to do a lot more. The server crashed. I went off and did other things. And then it got restored later in the day. But that is it for this episode. As always, if you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. It will always be appreciated. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.